Hey guys, uh, this is Dave. Welcome back to Just The Watch. Uh, today I want to do kind of a video for people who are a little bit newer into the hobby, um, kind of like I am. I've, I've only been watch collecting for about two years now, so I'm still very much a novice at all this, but I'm learning a lot and really been enjoying it. Um, but I want to talk about five things that everybody should know before they buy their first automatic timepiece. So if you have not bought a mechanical watch or an automatic watch before and you're thinking about it, this is a video that will probably help you. So let's go ahead and jump into what those five things are. All right, first thing that I think that you need to keep in mind and understand is that mechanical watches um, or automatic watches, they do require maintenance and that that maintenance does cost money. I think when I was first thinking of getting a mechanical watch, um, I had this idea that it was going to be this thing that would just last forever, um, that I could pass on to my grandchildren. It's like, you know, when I thought about getting a quartz watch, I kind of thought of it like, you know, a nice piece of clothing or something, the kind of thing that would wear out and then you'd replace it and get something new. Um, but when I started thinking about mechanical timepieces, I had all these dreams. It was like, oh, this is going to be an heirloom that's going to be passed down from generation to generation. And I had a budget of, you know, maybe like $200 and I was going to get this mechanical watch, but it was going to be mechanical and not quartz and it would last forever. Um, but, you know, the more I started doing research and realizing, um, you know, mechanical watches will last for a while, but maybe every five to 10 years, depending on a lot of different factors, they do require some servicing. And that's because the internals of a mechanical watch, um, there's no batteries, there's no electrical components. Um, so you don't have to worry about changing batteries, but inside there's all of these gears and uh, springs and things that wear down. There's lubrication and oils that need to be replenished and all these things. And if you ignore that, the watch is going to not function very well after a while. It won't be keeping good time and eventually it will just stop working altogether. Um, so you do need to have that kind of in mind that there is going to be some maintenance and there, there is a cost involved with that. And one of the problems with that is that a lot of times the maintenance on a mechanical watch can cost more than the watch itself. So like here I have this Seiko 5, which I really love. It's a cool watch. Um, I picked it up for like 100 bucks, uh, and you can, you can find these Seiko 5s for a lot uh, less than that. And this is a mechanical watch. It's, um, it's a really fun little mechanical watch. I really enjoy it. Um, but at $100, if I were to get this serviced, it's probably going to cost me more than $100 to get this service. So after 5, 10 years of owning this watch, it's probably not going to be working too well, and I'm either going to have to face the choice of getting it serviced and spending more than I spent on the actual watch or just replacing it um, or possibly replacing the whole movement, the mechanical internals inside. A lot of times it's cheaper just to replace everything inside rather than to actually have it serviced and fixed. Um, so that's something that I think you need to consider and that's you know the first thing that you know it sort of really shocked me when I started researching more um, because again I had this idea that I'd buy it and it would last forever and you know it's, one of the great things about it is that it doesn't require battery changes and so there'd be less things involved but actually um, in the long run it's probably going to cost you more uh, to you know for upkeep and you know having the, the service services done than it is going to cost you in batteries in a course watch um, so yeah, so that's the first one. Second thing to keep in mind is that uh, mechanical watches are not very accurate, especially compared to you know what most people are using now is like your cell phone. Your cell phone connects to a server, it gets the exact atomic time, you know, to an incredible degree of accuracy, and it refreshes that and automatically resets it. It's um, yeah, just incredibly accurate. Um, but even compared to you know like a, a quartz watch, a battery powered watch you know, like this one here over the swatch from Citizen, this is a battery powered one. Um, this one's super accurate. You know, it might lose a couple of uh, seconds a month, maybe in like a, a month it'll lose a few seconds um, and you'll be fine. But a typical mechanical watch is gonna lose, you know, anywhere from, you know, three or four seconds if it's really good to, you know, sometimes even as much as 20, 20 seconds every day it's gonna be off. And so they're not terribly accurate. Um, especially compared to modern electronic watches, and that is going to cause some uh, some issues. It's the kind of thing that you know you, you're going to have to be resetting it from time to time to keep it up to date, and there is a little bit more work there involved. It's not like even just a typical battery powered or quartz watch where you put it on and you never really have to think about it too much because it's you know pretty much going to keep the same time. Um, mechanical watches they're going to be requiring you to reset the time fairly frequently. The third thing that you need to keep in mind is that mechanical watches. Um, even though they don't have batteries, they do need to be powered by something and that's typically, in a mechanical watch, is typically a spring that's wound up and it's wound tightly and that spring can be wound in a number of ways. Uh, you can, you know, it can be a hand wound where you just wind the crown, you turn the, the crown and spin it and that will wind the watch. Um, or it will be, uh, you know, an automatic movement where you just, the movement of your wrist 
you know, keeps it wound, and there's a little rotor in there that, you know, weight that kind of spins, and that will keep the watch wound. But if you take it off of your wrist and set it aside, if you switch to a different watch, um, fairly common, you know, mechanical watches, especially in the entry-level range, they'll last for about 40 hours if they're 40, if they're fully wound. And after 40 hours, they're just going to stop. It's not going to work anymore. And the next time you pick it up, you're going to have to wind it and reset it. So moving on to the fourth thing, kind of keeping that in mind, and what you've probably guessed by now, is the actual ownership of a mechanical watch means that you are going to be resetting the time and the date fairly frequently. Um, unless you invest in a watch winder and spend a lot of money, which I've never done, um, again, you know, the watch is going to lose, lose or gain seconds just because of the, uh, the inaccuracy that a mechanical timepiece has. So even if you are wearing it and keeping it wound all the time, you know, probably once a week or once a month at the, the longest, you're going to be resetting it to get it, get it back on the right time because it might be as much as like five, ten minutes off by then. Uh, if you haven't reset it. So you're going to get used to, you know, much more frequently than a quartz watch to resetting the time. And if you have multiple ones or if you don't wear it all the time, then it's definitely going to wind down when you set it aside. And so the next time you pick it up, you're going to have to take that extra time to set the time and the date and to check it. And it'll just be kind of become this ritual that you kind of get used to. Um, but if, you, if you're used to having a, just a phone or a quartz watch, you might not realize um, how often you're going to wind up setting the, the time on a mechanical watch. I tend to rotate through. I've got a bunch of them here, and so I might wear a different one every day, and it's almost like every day I'm picking one up, and I'm, you know, I get up in the morning, I set the time, I wind the watch, um, check the date, and got to get it all done. It takes a few minutes to do. Um, it's kind of a fun little thing to go through, but it is an extra step that you don't have to worry about with quartz watches. And that brings us to the fifth and final thing. Um, even though you are resetting the time a lot, not all mechanical watches have um, certain features that make that easier. So for instance, you know, two of the most um, common features that you find on mechanical watches are called hacking and hand winding. Um, so hacking basically means that when you pull the crown all the way out, the second hand will stop, which, which happens on basically every quartz watch. Any quartz watch that you get nowadays, even the, the absolute cheapest, is going to have that feature. And what that allows you to do is it allows you to set the watch very accurately down to the second. Um, so, you know, you can have like a reference time, you look at it, you wait until the second on that reference time lines up with the second on your watch, and then you push the crown back in at that second, and then, you know, the, the watch will be set to that time. So it's a useful feature to have if you want to set your watch down to the second. And again, that's something that you're probably going to want to do because you're going to be resetting the time a lot. Um, another extremely useful feature on watches um, is a hand winding feature. So if you... Um, you know, the, the hand winding is basically you take the crown and you spin it and it will wind. So this watch here, this is a, a Laco uh, watch that I picked up. This one has hand winding. So if, I, if it has stopped, all I need to do to get it going is I can just spin this crown. Um, do that for, you know, maybe about 20 turns or so. It'll probably get fully wound. I should be good to go. Um, but this watch does not have hacking. So this is one that has hand winding but not hacking. And that's fairly common on a lot of entry level ones. So this one's a little bit difficult to set to the time. Um, however, there's other watches, um, like this Orient or like the Seiko 5 that I showed you guys earlier. Um, this watch from Orient does not have hacking or hand winding. Um, so that means I pick it up right now, it's not working. Uh, but in order to get the second hand winding, well, moving, if I spin the crown like this, nothing's going to happen. It doesn't do anything. Um, so every time I pick this watch up, if it's not fully wound, I've got to just shake it. Um, and this, this motion of shaking it will move the rotor in the back and that will get it working. And do this for about 30 seconds and it'll give it just enough juice so that it'll start keeping accurate time and then I can put it on my wrist. And then once it's on my wrist, just the natural you know, movement of my wrist throughout the day will keep it wound. It'll eventually bring it up to full power, usually by the end of the day without any problem. So it's not such a big deal, but it is a minor annoyance. And that is something to keep in mind, especially if you're looking at budget um, entry level watches. Uh, there are gonna be some that don't have you know, hacking or hand winding are these certain features, or some will have, you know, only hand winding but not hacking, and you might get the watch and be surprised at that, and kind of be got to just be aware of it. Um, so do a little bit of research into the different movements that are out there, and should be able to avoid that. Uh, but again, even something that doesn't have hacking or hand winding, I think when I first was looking into mechanical watches, 
um, I got a Seiko 5 watch and it didn't have hacking or hand winding and it really annoyed me. I eventually sold it and got rid of it. Um, but after having other mechanical watches for a while, it's not really such a big deal to me anymore. So, you know, like getting this Orient or getting, um, you know, that Seiko 5, I've picked them up again. They don't have hacking or hand winding. Uh, but, you know, it's fine. I, I still enjoy the watches and it doesn't really bother me that much. But that's a lot of it's going to come down to personal preference, I think. So those are five things I think everybody should know before picking up your first mechanical timepiece. Hopefully that helps you guys out. Let me know if you guys are in that spot of looking at a mechanical watch. Let me know what you guys are looking at and um, love to hear um, what's interesting you guys. And if you have any other tips for people who are new into mechanical or automatic watches, um, you know, drop them down below, leave them in the comments. Let's uh, give some people some good advice. But as always, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.